under the jurisdiction of the city, new construction, development, residential, commercial, recreational. Okay, pretty self explanatory. So, you know, in my opinion, this is very important, and the city needs to, um, that we, I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying that's great, and, and it has been addressed, and we have taken ordinance from what I can tell. Yeah. Do you guys have any comment or question on, on this the summary or on the ordinance itself? Now, now's the time. This is we're opening the floor for you guys to talk this over. So I did have a comment. I don't know if it falls under this category. What I understand is that new development can go to the general, can apply for an exemption and and um, pay in lieu of uh, exempting certain trees, they can ask the trees to be removed and then pay. And I am not too fond of that idea. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm concerned that trees are already pretty um, vulnerable and allowing developers to do just, I know they have to uh, file some sort of permit in order to get that and explain why they want to make some I guess it just felt like it needed to be a little tighter from what I read in the ordinance. Um, mm -hmm. um, Brent, what is the what is the exact penalty? I can't remember. I read it over. Well, there, there's there, there's a penalty if it's done in contravention of the ordinance, but there's also there is a, an opportunity for a developer or a homeowner uh, to, to do a cash in lieu or or, or replacement of, of the tree. Uh, there are times when there's a builder, when the, unfortunately the heritage tree is right in the middle of the lot. And there's, you, know, you, you can't say you can't take it out because then you deprive someone of using the property. But what this, this ordinance does, it says, okay, if you have to move it, then you have to pay a cash in lieu amount. And what, what Deborah has put in here, she has uh, upped that to, I think it's 50%. I'll, I, I'll have to look, but there's a pretty significant percentage of the lot value that has to be paid in lieu of that. So that builds in a financial disincentive you know, to do that. But there are times when they're going to have to take out a big tree, but there will be a cash and loop payment for that. Yeah. If they ignore the ordinance entirely, then they have to pay a penalty, and it's just pretty hefty. So what were you going to say there? I was just going to say, for an example, I'm on the library board, and we're doing an expansion of the library, and there are some trees that are going to have to be, to be able to put them. I mean, there's, there's only so many ways we can put the building on. And so they 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 are knowing well they're going to plant trees and, and, and that's under the Wimberley ordinance, the Wimberley tree ordinance. They have to so then because they have to take out I think it's two trees, that's just for the penny when I was there, they're having to make up for those trees. You do other plantings and stuff like that. Yeah, take a look. There's a uh, that's addressed specifically kind of correlate your pages with my pages. It's uh, section ninety one. Zero eight. It's your page seventeen, I believe. Sixteen. Okay. Oh, seventeen made it sense. Okay. okay. I've got different versions. I have a comparison version. But the comparison version is telling me that uh, the developer would have to pay twenty percent of the value of the property, the lot value. So if it's a Fifty thousand dollar lot value. They have to pay ten thousand dollars to move that tree. So, so are we? Is this? Or to remove the tree? No. So is this still in the context of heritage trees or yes. all trees? It's heritage trees and. I think it's heritage trees and protected trees. And again, it's section 91.08. Mm -hmm. And so I, I did not know what a cedar stand is necessarily. Is that a stand of cedar trees? Or the one? Mm -hmm. All right. So, so if hypothetically, if a tree was removed, a heritage tree, let's say a live oak that was 200 years old, and they're requesting to chop it down in order to build an extension to something or an apartment building um 
how do they compensate for that? There's, there's two ways. From the way I understand the uh, the, the proposal is either one, either they can uh, replant in a one to one ratio. So if it was a, a, a I don't know thirty inch diameter tree, they have to put thirty inches of diameter back on the property, or they could pay a cash in lieu. I think the present proposal is twenty percent of the value of the land. So I know the money issue doesn't bother some people. Um, ask people in Montana, and yeah. so I I just think that, um, that and I understand also that an arborist is required, you know, to look at these trees. We're required actually as part of our survey. Um, Jacob, I'm wondering if you can say anything about this. Uh, so what I understand is. Um, a certified arborist is required to prepare concise trees and suggested for protected size trees. And the only thing I'd like to add to that is we could suggest TCIA, which is the Tree Care Industry Association. And that would go along with Tree Cities USA. So you're saying the certified arborist should be uh, certified through TCIA? Uh, accredited through TCIA. And, um, I think that will help the tree board in the future um, get more accreditation through uh, tree, 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 city. tree City USA and okay. the Society of Municipal Arborists and okay. accreditors. So I've got kind of two suggestions on the board. One is uh, the certified barber should be accredited through the TCIA mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, we comply with uh, Tree City USA. Uh, guidelines. You're saying that the cash in lieu, if, if instead of replanting, uh, and they just want to pay the cash in lieu, you're you're thinking that the uh, that penalty, the cash in lieu amount should be more than 20 percent. It should be more. Uh, it should require a higher payment. It's well, okay to say what you think. Yeah, it's I, well, I just think it's really hard to put a value on a live oak. It's been there for hundreds of years and it has a right. microcosm environment that is yeah. supporting and it's really hard to put money value on that. And so I I think it should be um, I don't want it to be easy for somebody to come in and remove our beautiful trees in the name of development that taxes all of our environment and and taps the water sources that we have and the oxygen that we're breathing. Yesterday, I think the air quality was 102. I don't know if it, I check it, I check it daily. This morning it was 92. You know, that's, that's what our trees do. Okay, so I hear you on that. What is, what are the folks on the, other folks on the board think? 20% enough for cash and loot? And what we're talking about is if you take a big tree out, then you gotta pay, you either gotta replace those inches that you're taking out. You may be, you know, 30 little trees. Uh, or or uh, a cash in lieu. Right now, it's twenty percent of the land value. It's a forty or fifty. Let's say a fifty thousand dollar lot. That's ten thousand dollars. We don't have a fifty thousand dollar lot. Or twenty percent of the property value. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that doesn't mean the structure. It just means the land, isn't that right? Yeah, that's what. That's oh, we don't have any. I mean, they're going to. They're all more probably worth more. Um, I'm just using round numbers. Right, right. Can, yeah. Right. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, you have to weigh the fact that the city also needs development too, and not to discourage people too much. I mean, I agree. I, I, I sitting here thinking about that tree, I'm like, oh, I mean, that just makes me sad all the time when I think about that tree. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I, I, I agree. It, it's a they're, and they are a great asset to this community. I mean, everybody, one of the first things I remember is driving up this street in Champion Circle and there were trees in the street. We thought that was the coolest thing. Um, so, you yeah, know, we do. We have to um, place a lot of value on our, our trees. Um, I, I just don't think I know enough to say Maybe I don't understand. Um, yeah. Not, well, okay, what I can do is convey to the council then that. Uh, there is a question about if there is a cash and loot payment, if, if that 20% is enough or not. Is right. that your concern? I, I, or? I, yes, I think okay. that would be I okay. think that would be reasonable. Do you have an opinion on that, Jacob? Um, so I do know there's a website that you can 
put in the diameter of tree mm -hmm. uh, of the of the tree, and it'll tell you kind of like what it's worth. Uh, it goes by species and diameter. But I don't know really how that would apply. In the same That's way. how the nurseries charge for a tree. They right. don't tag the tree with a specific price. If you go and measure the diameter, and they know how many years it is, how much labor intensive work it took, and then they say, okay, it's a thousand dollar tree. It's, it's, oh, it's yeah. how you value uh -huh. a tree. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And each lot is going to be different because what if it's one tree in the middle, but they've got 30 on the perimeter property? It, every, every lot's going to be different. Well, and that's what, what we're trying to balance here because I think we all feel the same way. I hate seeing a big tree um, come out. Yeah. And, uh, it just, and, and I hate to see a lazy buller that when he could have worked around it, he just decided not to. So, uh, but we have to balance that with there are times when it has to happen. And uh, we can't tell a person you can't develop your property because right. then we're going to get sued and we're going to have a problem. Uh, so, you've got to start to balance there. And the way that uh, I think Deborah's trying to do, and we're all trying to do with this ordinance, is to come up with a, a financial disincentive. You know, if you, you got to take it out, it's going to cost you some money. Either replace them one, one to one, or there's a financial penalty. The question is, is 20% of, of the land value enough or not? Um, and that, that's what, what I understand that's your concern. Uh, you, you may or may not have a specific recommendation on that, but you do have a concern about that. Is that right? Or, yeah. Um, that is my concern. Yeah. That somebody will come and say, yeah, I have a thousand dollars, let's do it. Yeah. But, um, but I think we, and I don't know how to measure this, but there's also environmental damage when we remove a heritage tree to the rest of the environment and not property. Right. It's in that I, I, I agree. I so I think it does need to be higher. And I, I think it would be important, and I'm not a builder, I think it would be important to try to encourage more creative use, more creative building, rather than just saying, yes, you can do this, you just have to pay this money. I, I would rather encourage builders to just be more ecologically minded. How, how would you do that, though? I mean, what, do you have any ideas? I just ask. Um, mm -hmm. um, is it possible to build around it? You know, I mean, you know, that was one of the first things you said. Or, in your mind as a builder, how can we design something to protect this tree? Now, I've seen buildings with trees in the middle of them. And you know, there's always this challenge because it affects the structure after a while, the foundation. foundation. So but it could be accounted for, you know. Um, I don't have all the answers, but I just think we need to look for some other creative answers to protect what we've got. Um, in addition to what Iris is saying, um, we also can look at the, the price increase. The lots have increased in price dramatically. And I don't know if it would be looking at the percentage of increase that lots have, if that could also be reflected in the price that uh, the tree uh, value is. I don't know if that's logical, but. Uh, that would be a way to increase the price and maybe something that I'm used to in that way. I mean, I agree the best way is to save the tree, but um, in many cases, it's worth And really, there's really not many lots left here. Really, what we're talking about is the, a lot to get into the ETJ and how people develop the ETJ. Mm -hmm. And that's you know because that's not that's not that there is empty lots there. So what I mean I appreciate that piece of information and whoever created this um, this um, the tree ordinance mm -hmm. brilliant. I mean there's so much detail in it. I loved how much that was. So I just want to express that appreciation. Well, so thank you to all of you who supported the Hines in making it happen. The other thing is that I moved here from Austin and I saw many, many old properties that were sold for thousands of dollars over asking and everything on the property was raised and then started over. And 
that happened all over historic Austin. And so it is possible, I mean, maybe not too many lot left, but the ones that are here might go up for sale and somebody might decide they want to have just good. Right, that, that is definitely true. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't mean to be a stick in the mud, but I, I am going to be. <laughs> well, that's what we're looking for is for your feedback mm -hmm. and, uh, and your recommendations. So that, that's exactly why you're here. Uh, I'm not saying that everything you say is going to come true, but it certainly helps uh, when the council comes and, and looks at this to have your feedback. One other. Uh, okay, next, go ahead. next is the proposed update and controversial oh. and desirable. Okay. Are we still on tree ordinance? Yeah. I'm going to say something about the, the tree ordinance, uh, item 2N. says, uh, every owner of a tree overhanging in the street or right away, it should be eight foot over the surface of the street. I think that's pretty shallow. Uh, the city of Austin is 14 foot. That's your regular size box truck or uh, mm -hmm. semi truck. So I think that's to be 14 foot at least. You're yeah. on page 15. I'm page 15. I, yeah. I agree. That's yeah, enough. that's a uh, section. Uh, What's that, 9107? Yeah. 9107. Yeah. Because city, city every year goes around. Bringing 16 feet at the street for the school bus. Is it every year? Every year. Mm -hmm. They come through and. and okay. Uh, I know they did it last year. Uh, I'm out there every year telling them, would you go past the eagle eye? You better see it, you better clean your equipment, people. Mm -hmm. But they, I mean, I'm always there. Yeah, so far it's been. So you're saying change the eight feet to 16? Yeah, 16. That's what they do every year. I ask them, how far are you going? They said, see this pole? 16 feet. We're going only to the tip of that pole. My husband needs to go out there and say, well, who's a liar? So eight foot yeah. is typically over the sidewalk. Oh. And then <clears throat> okay. 14 to 16 over the street. I think the, the city of Austin is 14 foot. Maybe you should put that there because they do come out in my city of Wood Creek. That's kind of how do that. Okay. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to check with Deborah about that because, you know, I, it's hard for a, a resident to, to get to that, you know, to that oh. line. Yeah. So yeah. you're saying that maybe uh, eight feet, I guess at the property line, but sixteen feet in the center of the street. Or? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, the tree company y'all use comes on both sides of the street with that pole, and the guy right behind them is the bucket truck yeah. that will not go above that sixteen foot pole. I saw some trees that were, I don't know what happened to them on Highway 12. And they looked like they were butchered on a fence line um, by, is it Highway 12? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Highway 12. They looked like they were really butchered. And I don't know what kind of tools were used to clean, to cut those. Somebody. I mean, maybe an easement cutting in there. Utility. Yeah. Utility easement. Well, these were cut. Probably shorter than me, and they were shrunk. I mean, they've been shredded. Yeah, they yeah. use a, a skid loader with a hydraulic attachment. You can't do precision. Um, That's not going to be done here in Wednesday. So I, I think my, my question is is there anything that uh, discusses or expresses what kind of tools to use on tree cutting in the city? I've seen rotary blades used on trees that were low hanging in other cities, and it destroys. And I, I don't know if anything specific about what type of tools. I know that there is a requirement that the tools be cleaned, uh, and there's a penalty if they're not cleaned uh, with regard to oak trees because that's a that's an issue with uh, oak wells. So 
that has been added in and the penalty has been increased on that. But in terms of specific tools, uh, I don't see that in there. Um, I haven't seen that to be an issue around here in terms of training. Really. Yeah, I don't think an owner would allow kind of. Yeah. Okay, next one. Thank you. Do you want to address that line tailing? You might. The line tailing, <laughs> the removal of interior branches. Bonsai look. Do I have a call? What page is that on? It is 28. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back to the screen. Okay. It bans the controversial and undesirable. Lion tail hopping off because it leads to the tree failing. Everybody knows what that is? I don't know what lion tailing is. If I had an image of it, some people do that maybe with uh, or bonsai where you take a nice big beautiful limb that has nice big beautiful branches and leaf out. And you leave, you cut everything off, but you leave this little nubby tail. Yeah. Oh. It's yeah. time to cut myrtles sometimes. Yeah. No. That would be more of a polarity where they, they cut it off at the same level every year. Yeah. But that, that's basically topic. Um, Lion telling is you're, you're leaving brush at the very extremities of the branch. You're taking all the interior stuff out. So when the wind blows through the canopy, um, all the torque is at the very tips and not distributed throughout the whole brand. Um, why would somebody do that? The 80s. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was popular back in the day. Uh, people think it makes the canopy look real clean mm -hmm. and it just it got real popular. Um, oh. And then you start seeing a lot of broken branches because of wind damage. Um, and then like ice damage as well, you know, you have a long, long lever of a branch and then you put all the weight on one side and um, right. you create failure. Okay. So it's not practiced anymore through the ISA or any other um, legitimate organization. So, neither is topping. Um, that's why he wants you to certify an arbor as someone who's not following those practices or a leader. Right, yeah. I mean, you don't want a fly by night person no. uh, you can't ever get a hold of who um, isn't liable for what they do. Give some sort of um, list of certified art arborists in town. I mean, during the. There's a whole website. Um, you can find it through the Texas A&M Forestry web website or ISA Texas. Um, I believe it's ISA Texas, and it has a whole every Texas certified arborist um, in your county, in your state. So um, it's a great, great source of information, and um, yeah, you can find a certified arborist real close. I'm just wondering because in the spring, I don't know how many people came to my door offering to cut my trees. Oh, yeah, it happens. Maybe we could do something against canvassing. <laughs> yeah, that's an idea. Um, enforcement's going to be a problem, but. I still use my old ways when we used to have the sign posted at the entrance, no solicitors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that sign. I took a picture of it on my phone, and someone would be in the neighborhood wherever I was, and I would say, Who are you? Well, I'm looking for, oh, I'll just look and say, See the sign? They will escort you out to the entrance. <laughs> just let me call them up. They just do it loud. Right. So they didn't know. Right. Very good. Very good. Um, okay, next. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Um, okay, you create an incentive program to help residents replace trees lost to oak oil. And suggestion or comment on that one? No, I think this is great. And that's what it, any fine money and stuff that go into the fund, that's what I understand, mm -hmm. to, help, to help people um, create um, 
did, you know, have a set of plant orchards. So I, I, I like that. It's gratitude. Gratitude. That's where maybe setting up a fund for a memorial fund for people like me who have run out of room on my property. <laughs> okay. You know what? Did somebody lose a tree somewhere? Does somebody even need a tree or shade? Or I, I love that idea about the memorial fund. I don't know if that's something we can put in this part, but that's great. I know it's down the road. Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, how did that? Um, change it on this list. It's just added on to what we've already got. Was a suggestion. What creating a, creating the incentive, incentive program. program. Uh, so um, it. Oh, maybe maybe I don't know. Um, probably I would think Deborah Hines, who is writing this, is that something that uh, the Tree USA? I mean, to be a tree city, is that a requirement? Mm -hmm. and yeah. That was not. That it's not on my first agenda. This was the newest one she had when you and I were here. Okay. Yeah. So that's not on this one either. Okay. But I like it. I think I, I love it. it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, you guys take a look at 91.06 and then see what page you need. Page 7 of 13. I think it's on page 13 of the packet. There's a tree fund that's set up. Yep, that's, uh, uh, that, that's for the cash and payment. Go to, and then that's administered by the council, and that maybe the responsibility may be designated to the tree board and be drawn upon to implement, implement landscaping improvements in city parks, city control right away, green spaces, and other public lands. So those payments that come in you know, can be used to for landscaping and certainly for, for more trees. So that, that's the purpose of it. Yes. You know? So yeah. this is a little different because we're actually helping residents replace trees. So right. What if we That's write true. it in as um, A1 or something? Which page do you want? Yeah, so that the program itself. Which page do you want? It? I'm on the same page, the tree fund. Okay, sorry. 9106. Okay. Yeah, 9106. Okay. The tree fund. If we were to add that, that an incentive fund would be set up or incentive, yeah, for people replacing trees. Just if it's someone who can't. Or right. It's more just so we know they're bedded and they're yeah. Like a million dollar home wouldn't want. Yeah. If, if you take a look at 91.12, uh, that's on page 23 of your packet. Um, there is provisions for cost sharing of, of treatments, for instance. And I know in here I can't just lay my hand up right now that there is a program to help. Uh, homeowners in terms of oak wilt um abatement let me see if i can yeah in the uh, uh council edits and suggestions there's a provision um increased replacement tree program from the city to 50 percent or up to 600 dollars so I, I don't know exactly where that is because i'm still trying to learn my way around the new Ordinance, but uh, so that is in there. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. I think we've discussed the ad penalties for responsible parties not cleaning their tools between trees and not painting, you know, and not painting lights. I mean, mm -hmm. I think we've kind of gone over that. Yeah. If you're looking for that, uh, the cost sharing that's uh, it's 91.12 section C. Which is uh, yeah, uh, yeah 91.12 that portion is on page 23 of your packet. The ordinance one that you got today. Did you? Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'll do the best. Okay. Next. So, will you be making these suggestions to the council? Based on what you're telling me, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. That's why I'm here. To listen and to learn. Okay. 
Okay, looking at the changes to the tree ordinance, um, we've already covered a lot of it. Increased payments for removing protected inheritance, that's what you address. Um, Peter Stans. Um, I had a question. Um, so, um, I don't know where it falls under uh, when I was reading the, the ordinance at home. There was a section about owners are required to remove dead trees. Okay. And um, I've seen many trees that are infected with other things other than oak wilt. And the trees look really dead. And I wonder what kind of protection there is for the neighborhood to have a dead tree that's infested with moss. It's huge trees. I've seen them on a gust lane as it empties into movement in that area. And that's on public property? Or private private. private. It's private. It's on the corner, but I think it's private. I've seen several trees. I don't go looking for them legally. I just <laughs> but um, when I see something like that, you know, it's it's um, also there are some dead trees behind my property that I think are public property. Yeah, it's golf course in that I which side of the street are you on the golf course side? No, on the other oh, side okay. of Acosta, mm -hmm. and they're falling into my yard. That's how I know that they're dying. Mm -hmm. And um, and I have removed the branches that were falling, but I'm, I'm aware it's also a fire hazard. And I don't remember reading anything that's talking about removing trees for fire mitigation. Okay, so that's something you'd like the council to look at. Is uh, removal for, well, if everybody else is in the well, there's an organization called Firewise, and you basically just trim everything roughly six feet off the ground on uh, right of ways and places like that that don't get a whole lot of attention. Uh, I don't know if that's true. Yeah, um, so we're talking two things one, right of way, and then private. Addressing a dead, dead tree yeah. issue. Yeah. I don't know how you address fall moss. The fall moss doesn't kill a tree. Right. It's fall just, moss it's basically is gravitates yeah. to dead or infectious. The fall moss, uh, to my knowledge, doesn't kill a tree. Um, it gravitates to the um, to the branches, the brush underneath. So, yes, or just the, the limbs up in the tree. Uh, we claim to have ball moss removed, but others have told us that the ball moss is not killed. Oh, the ball moss. Yes, yeah, so the ones in this public, I don't know if it's golf course or if it's public, but they're dead trees mm -hmm. and they don't have, you know, we've had two major snowstorms and then drought. So, the trees are really falling over, and it's we call that stress. I'm stressed. <laughs> I said I'm stressed. But Mr. Mr. Reynolds, there's a, there is a provision in the uh, in the ordinance. It's 92.10. It's on page 19 of, of your packet. This deals with the basement removal being required. But this applies to oak wood uh, trees. And that's why I was bringing it up. Because oh, there's, there may be there. It's not a quote. This okay. is um, natural demise of a tree. And but the the oak that I saw with the ball moss that maybe doesn't cause a fire is still dead and it's a big tree. Does the panel have any, any ideas or thoughts on that? But this is on somebody else's property. Yes, that tree that I saw was public property, but I've also seen trees. No, excuse me, private time. Mm -hmm. um, we've uh, contacted the extension service and we had a couple of trees removed that 
um, you know, were dead. Um, but one individual said it's also a habitat for birds and wildlife if you use it. You know, once it is removed from the trunk um, and just letting the dead provide, you know, shelter for, for other animals. I'm wondering if we could just have somebody look at these things as we're doing the survey. You know, to see if it's something that needs to be addressed further. Um, yeah, I think right now we need to get through this and, and decide because we can't solve all these problems today. We, but right now we, we need to this further again. Um, but we need to get through this and decide whether we're gonna what we're gonna decide for that. If, we, if what we're gonna suggest to the city council, so they can we can move on and get this for, to get to the food yeah, on the street ready and uh, yeah. I nice to see that. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ramos, I will point out on, on page 21 of Jacob pointed this out to me, uh, section 91.11, um, there is a provision for trees that are in, in unsafe condition. But if the panel wishes, the committee wishes, I can raise other dead trees in terms of if that should be part of this ordinance or not. <clears throat> That's why in the future we like to have educational workshops so they don't become dead trees. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So let's see. Um, um, are you looking at the list? There's penalty for workers not sterilizing, cash payment. Cash and movement. What is improved guidelines for trees infected with things other than oak world and bug infestations? What is that exactly? Can you tell me clarify? Can someone explain that to me? Bear with me. Okay. Are you on the? Uh, I'm on page 28. I'm right the second one from the bottom. Yeah. I'm just. Um, it makes me think of my neighbor's tree who was an elm tree. It was an elm tree and it was in this tree with bark and tree. Oh, so what does it have to do? Um, half of it came down in a little storm, hit the roof, hit the railing, broke up. But when people see the signs and don't do anything about it, what happens? Mm -hmm. You know, the signs were all there with small limbs falling, falling. I mean, it was just, there's really so much a person can do because when they fail to take action on something that is infected with carpet their hands or yeah, I think that's tough because everybody's yeah. not educated in that. You know, um, that section you're, you're talking about is 91.12, which in your packet is going to be. Page 22. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so here it talks about not sending it. Right. And okay. That is covered pretty well. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't bring it up before. Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, it is a property owner's issue. You know, yep. I can't tell you how many neighbors I, I mow, water the plants, see their dogs and they're gone. I'll say, uh, have you seen my tree? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I told you. Right. It's only so much. Yeah. Right. I, I think this makes it clear that that is the owner's responsibility and there is a provision that, you, that uh, you know, the city can send a representative out or their licensed professional to inspect it and determine the risk. So, um, and then there's a notice provision. Um, you know, going forward. So I think that's covered in the most part. But that is a that is a valid concern. It's not just oak rope for making, you know, sometimes trees just get old or they get sick and it can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
The issue is going to be enforcement. Say again. The issue. Yes, ma'am. Is going to be enforcement. There is an enforcement mechanism built in here. A lot of that's going to be. Uh, if you see something, you know, you got to say something, and then the city can contact them and say you got a tree that's about to fall on your house or your neighbor's house or whatever. And then there's a process to deal with that. Okay. Okay. Well. On the anybody have comments on eight or twenty nine? Looks like the other a lot of it. We topping replacement tree program for two hundred six hundred dollars. The one I didn't understand here is guys you need these regulations in the planning section to to really be able to enforce in the DTJ. Yeah, yeah. quickly. Uh, yeah. There is concern about making sure this is enforceable in the ETJ, and that's kind of a legal mechanism that we're going to have to look at uh, in order to make sure that uh, if there is new new development out in the ETJ, that they don't bulldoze it, put a parking lot, and then a, a big store in the middle of it. So uh, that's kind of something I, I don't think you necessarily need to. Be worried about that's going to be worked through the, the K Breeze consultant with the attorneys and then with the council. Um, that, that's a legal issue that uh, that we'll be dealing with to make sure it is enforceable out there. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. <laughs> and, and I think that consider more teeth, I think uh, that's when it went from 10% of the land value or lot value to 20%. And then the question is from that I'm carrying from you guys is uh, is that enough or is there any other creative way to, to deal with that? Yeah, that was what we discussed. Yes. So are we in agreement that we want to uh, we want to Propose these changes that we want to pass um, the proposed updated tree ordinance, but with some considerations for those two things. Is that, is that what we're agreeing to now? I am. Um, okay, let, let me just for clarification for the motion, and then you guys make your motion. Okay. Uh, what I have so far is uh, the certified order should be accredited through the TCIA. Um, the cash in lieu, we should take a look at whether or not 20% of lot value is enough or if there's any other creative ways to deal with that. Um, 91.07 in terms of trimming trees uh, with regard to the street clearance. Uh, take a look at eight feet on the property line and then maybe allow an increase to 16 foot at the center of the street, you know, so it's practical for, for the trucks and whatnot. Um, that's what I have for those one, two, three things. Yeah. Uh, to create some sort of statement regarding the fund to support people when they lose a heritage tree. I think that's, that's in that's here already. Yeah, the tree fund. Yeah. Tree fund yeah. Be covered. The tree fund is yeah. goes to for us to spend yeah. or to help people out if they need to help replace some trees. Yeah. Okay. It says that specifically. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Somehow I moved. So um, let's see. How can we make this a motion? Um, can I? I, I um, I'll make a motion to um, to uh, pass the um, the the proposed updated tree ordinance um, with the three listed um, suggestions, which are uh, arbor certified or arborist accredited under TCIA. Certified so artists, arborists accredited under TCI. What was it? What was TCIA. TCIA. Okay. <laughs> uh, take a look at cash and lieu um, payment. Yeah, that that is is twenty percent enough. It's twenty. Yeah. Take a look at the cash and lieu payment of twenty percent. Consider increasing it to discourage developers from taking down heritage trees. And being more creative in their structural designs. And being more creative in their structural designs. And lastly, on 91.07, um, eight foot um, clearance at the property line, increasing to 16 foot at center. Eight foot um, clearance at the property line being increased to 16 foot. 
Um, do I have a second? I second that. I'll third it. <laughs> no. Can you ask for any further discussion? And you may want to ask this gentleman if you wanted to talk on this agenda item. Did you want to talk on this agenda item? I have no comment on your agenda. Okay. I became aware a few days ago that there was to be a committee meeting about trees. I have a comment about trees. About 15 years ago, I wrote a letter to the Wood Creek with a proposal for Wood Creek's future. Remembered it, was in my files, found it, updated it about six, eight years ago, sent it in. My proposal is we have Wood Creek, uh, we have Oak Wood, but the Wood Creek Drive. Maybe this will get somebody's attention. The trees in here are going to die. I'm in, I'm in, oh my. We are not going to see Wood Creek when it's fair, but somebody will. My proposal is this. If there was effort for planting new trees, one or two trees per lot, free per lot, with help to dig, put tree hoops around to protect them, recommendation from AM about what kind of trees to plant, perhaps some help from the scouts or something like this. A proposal to put a program like this together and plant several new trees in each lot in Wood Creek. And 10 years from now, when these things start to go, we'll have some young growth, 10 to 12 feet tall, coming in behind us. Yeah, I mean, that, that, is, that is, I think that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, but we can't address that yeah. right now. I'm just going to say, we're kind of limited uh, under Texas law to just talking about the on our agenda. I'd love to talk about that. Um, what I'd ask you to do is uh, I can give you my email and let's we'll get it on the agenda and start talking about that kind of program because this is what this committee is for. But we can't do it today because we're limited to best three or four things. So, uh, I just wonder whether this is the right place. I think it is, just not today. You know, uh, I'll give you my email address and I want you to, to yes. work with me mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll work to get an agenda item to do that. I'm uh, not sure I heard your name. We, we can do that. It's time to call for votes now. I'd like to call for a vote to approve the updated changes to the tree order. I second that. Oh, I can just, we're voting. Yeah, we're voting. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, board member Irish Roberts? Yes. Board member Monica Rocha? Yeah. Board member Dorothy Tajan? Yeah. Board member Cindy Jones? Yeah. Board member Iris Ron. I'm sorry. I can make it. No. Take the big back. Okay, moving on to the next. The second thing Treat with the USA needs so we can apply in September. Okay, discuss and take action on Arbor Day events. Um, okay, and so um, I'm going to make right here a motion. Okay, I I hear I make a motion to uh, discuss and take appropriate action on the Arbor Day event. Second motion. Thank you. Um, well, you know, I just know that it's going to be probably in October. There's not, you know, uh, well, uh, well, you know, we had discussed before, so I'm. I'm Sorry, I'm moving too fast. We really discussed before to put it to put it um, to have that that um, in conjunction with um, National Night Out because there's going to be the spectacular too, and we don't want to, you know we won't I don't think we'll get attract very many residents if we have too many events in too close a time frame. But National Night Out is not going to be held until the weather is cooler because um, there's a feeling that. Not enough people would come if it's so hot. It's, it's also in the evening, isn't it? Five yeah. 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 So, yeah. so Arbor Day could be celebrated in daytime. Um, I mean, 
October's great. Okay, cool. It's better. Yeah. I mean that 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 I that's just my suggestion. I just think that it's um for our first event for people to become aware of the fact that we are a tree committee and we're we're doing this to, to try to promote and educate people about trees. We're just gonna be more successful if we already have a crowd coming for the high dollars and other things. I too. agree. Because you gotta start slowly, I think, when you track people. That's just what I've found before. Anybody else have an opinion? I agree. I have special night nice draws a good crowd. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I agree. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just wondering if when do we just talk about what we're going to do for our grenade event? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can yeah, we can talk about it. I'm just saying that I don't no when the event's going to be. I'm just suggesting that we hold this national night out that hasn't been set yet. That's all I'm doing. And so now we can talk about what we want to do and ideas. We don't have to clarify anything today. I think this is just the time that we start getting ideas. Just if you have an idea, it's a great time to talk about it. I <laughs> you <laughs> know. That 35 cycle pounds and all over if they're just some giveaway plants of some kind it doesn't have to be a tree um but yeah i can certainly donate um quite a few plants i, I love that idea of a plant exchange because yeah. that that would um you know there's gardeners who are not a plant exchange <laughs> so i i think that's great i would like to suggest that we set up some booths on with education and maybe diagrams and posters on how to plant trees, how to take care of them. Um, I think most people, I, I know people who just put a little hole and pop it in there and, and then the tree dies. Yeah. So um, I think, and I don't know who to ask, but if we could get real estate company, a development company to offer some, um, donate some trees. We could give some trees away, I think it's Tree Day, Arbor Day, yeah. So there's a whole organization in Travis uh, County called Tree Folks, and mm -hmm. they go around and they do that. That's, that's what they do. They're a nonprofit. And they might even be willing to give away several hundred uh, small trees ready to be planted. That uh, a lot of them are going to be, but that's fun of it. So I believe they'll do a little educational uh, how to tree plant and then uh, kind of give you a few details about tree location and make sure you don't put it in an undesirable spot or a power line or another existing tree that's and compete. Um, so they kind of put it all nice and neat, and I think we could reach out to them and see if they can meet us on national data. Find out. Tree folks, urban forestry, Texas Forest Service. I think we get in contact with as many people as we can because they're going to be busy setting up their workshops and giveaways. And these are some geo. Green guys. Uh, I'm waiting on three people to contact me for a little booth set up workshop for our Arbor Day event. But I want to get several boxes of these to give to everybody, and it would be nice to give them a tree or two. But like the gentleman said, um, I started when we first moved here and we saw Oakville come through. First thing I did was start planting different species of trees. Should I lose or not uh, the beautiful oaks to oak well? <clears throat> yeah, I think they're all great ideas. We just got to get a date because you yeah. can't attract people to come unless there's a date. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What about my calendar? Uh, no, the the National Night Out has to oh, be done. Yeah, yeah. 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 But thank you for being so eager. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
table for children who will be there eating their hot dogs with their families and a, a coloring thing where they we have pictures of trees and they they just take one and just sit and color mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah that's what we, that's what we want we'll get the kids involved because they won't take me long go um the schools have garden clubs or at least they were quite active prior to the pandemic and Jake as well, and I've shown a lot, but that would be something to contact the teachers, um, you know, who have that at the schools. Oh, and good, good. Yeah. Children involved. Do you have a name? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think it's Mrs. Boyd is not there. She was the big garden club person, and then she's no longer there. Yeah, that's Jake as well. I don't know. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, it was super active. I, I know that kids don't live in Wood Creek. I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to put a damper on it, but I'm just trying to be more reality. You know, when I was a teacher, it was a great idea, but would it actually, um, did you have room in your curriculum for that? Mm -hmm. I, I think we need to concentrate on Wood Creek people because we're in Wood Creek yeah. and, and, and the families in Wood Creek. But the idea of, of having um, activities for kids you know, what's the fair? I love that idea. But I think we really need to focus on Wood Creek children. And, you know, I don't know, Deborah, I mean, there are, I think there are some moms groups in Wood Creek too. That would be a good way to promote what we're doing through those moms groups. You know, it, we're promoting our activities through those moms groups. I'm um, looking at Jacob because I know that Deborah's involved <laughs> in some of them, but they have networks. I used to do this when I did the children's library and you know get involved in those networks so I can sort of work through those networks because that's what they do. They tell their friends, I'm gonna go send the friend goes. Yeah, that works. Oh, yeah. so, uh, we could always do like a, a nature walk, you know, someone walks the kids around and identifies trees and kind of where they grow and Something like that, or a scavenger hunt. Yeah, scavenger hunt, but they'd be a lot more interested in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Where is this going to take place? Oh. Um, we we don't know. Yeah. It could be at it could be at the golf course, or it could be at Jacob's. Uh, I can't find you there. They just have to decide on dates. They haven't decided yet. Yeah. I propose that we um, have enough ideas for now and that maybe we could discuss it further once we get the date and a location, then we can develop these ideas about what we actually want to try to work on. In the meantime, I'm happy to call tree folks and see what they offer. Oh, that would be great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that would be wonderful. Like, maybe come up with that. Task first. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. And you know that gentleman that was here, maybe he would be. In, we need an all. We need two alternates here on this group too. Maybe he would be interested. Yeah. Um, great. I didn't get his name. Well, no, I know Brent. Brent has Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. What else on Arbor Day? Any, any other comments for Arbor Day? On the food. Or they, you know, we don't have to wear that food. That that will be done with the um through the national library. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Now we move on to the next. We would suggest a snow cone shoe. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a big job. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have agreed to, to table this, considering uh, uh to table this pending further research. Uh. We don't have a specific date yet, so we'll have to discuss that once again after yeah. City Council comes up with the national date. I think this is the way we were kind of like, we would say, well, let's amend the motion okay. to table this and okay. further research. Okay, oh, okay. So let's uh, amend, I, I amend this. Amend the current motion. Amend the current motion, and we're going to table this until uh, further research and a date has been set. National Mind out.
I second the motion first. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, we need to vote. We need to vote. Need to vote? Okay. So we're going to vote on the amendment to table it. Okay. Uh, so, so we can debate in the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for this. So this yes. is the vote to take, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, Jacob McElmore? Yes. Uh, Monica Resto? Yes. Dorothy Chasian? Yes. Cindy Jones? Yes. And Iris Strong? Yes. So now we need to vote on the motion, which was to uh, have the Arbor Day event on National Night in the evening of National Night. Yeah. Okay. So then what's we doing? Mm -hmm. We're we'll still writing. writing. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me go take a look. Uh, board member Iris Ramos? Yes. Board member Monica Roscoe? Yes. Board member Dorothy Tajan? Yes. Board member Cindy Jones? Yes. Board member Jacob McElroy? Yes. Yes. Okay, moving on, third thing on the agenda, discuss the tree inventory recommendation. Um, so one of the items in the ordinance asked the tree board to come up with the tree inventory. I think there's a map on the back, there is on the very back of your yes. And it tells us the public tree park property owned by the Wood Creek. And that's where we need to take a tree inventory, species, size, health care, action to be taken. Um, is there a um, gonna make need to make a motion to no, we need to make a motion. Yeah. Okay. This is how we're currently doing it. Some that doesn't make sense, but the way we do it now is we need a motion to discuss, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay. I make a motion to discuss the city council tree inventory request and possible division of the city into quadrants for analysis. Second. Okay. 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 Now, to my understanding, is we're, we're inventorying the trees that the city owns, not on the properties that the city owns. Okay. Not the whole, not every, but that would be a man's job. That's the well, streets and the city, city parks. Oh, yes. The streets and the city parks. Mm -hmm. um, um, There's, I think, too, and it, it's a little confusing, but I'm looking at uh, the language of the ordinance and then the recent uh, action by council. The tree ordinance just provides that uh, you develop uh, and administer a written plan for the care, preservation, etc., of trees and shrubs and in, in areas of the city owns, public areas. The, uh, what the council uh, voted as well uh, that they wanted you to do was to uh, request you guys to create a tree inventory of trees located on the city on property. So one is just an overall plan, how we're going to take care of our trees. The other is, well, let's get a specific tree inventory of what we have on the areas. I do have a map that has the passage to the chair, and I think you have a copy of this, a map of, of public parks and whatnot. So um, I think with regard to the tree inventory and city on properties, that map will help you. Um, so those are the two things. You know, how are we going to take care of all our trees? And the other is, let's get an inventory of just what trees we have on, on public areas. And, and there's no immediate you know, uh, uh, deadline for this. I think uh, we'll have to see how the overall planning, how it dovetails with uh, with the Treaty USA process. But 
Those are two kind of distinct at the same time. They're kind of the same. Did you have something to add? So the city has the right of way on the streets as well. Okay. So there's, there's a number of people who have requested that the city remove dead trees in the right of way. Yeah. So that's something that needs to be moved forward as well. <laughs> So we're in a discussion phase now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so looking at the requirements, the four core standards for urban for the, for the designation of True City USA, it's um, having a tree board, having a tree ordinance, spending at least three dollars per capita on urban forestry is number three and then celebrating Arbor Day. So what we're talking about is knowing what we've got so that we can then what is two dollars per cap? What does that mean? Let me see how many people live in here about fourteen hundred. So it'd be okay. So it'd be about two dollars times two thousand, four thousand dollars you know, on whatever that, that checklist requires to spend it on. And what falls under urban forestry? I, I would assume I, we're not really an urban area, but I would, if, in the context of Wood Creek, I would think that that would be trees within our city limit. Green space, the green infrastructure. Yeah, it, it, particularly the, the city owned. All right, so I, I see how doing the survey would dovetail into that, meeting that requirement. Um, right. I mean, See that? Yes. Yeah. I'm not clear on on. I mean, it. I think you can go into street clearance as well. You know, spend that four thousand dollars or roughly four thousand dollars on clearing the the trees away from the street or up to ordinance. Um, all right. Well, uh, I would think so. It, it looks like it's just fairly flexible. We can use it almost any way as long as it's not like to. Build something right. or concepts for trees. Yeah, <laughs> living trees. Something for yeah. trees. Yeah, you know, helping, cutting, healing, maintaining. Right. So yeah, it's two steps. One, see inventory of the trees we have and and city-owned properties, parks, and whatnot. And then the other is just a plan for dealing with trees on on our property and also on the right of way. So I think we first have to start with the inventory. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, um, you know, at first we have to start with the, the um, city owned properties and the parks. As far as right of ways, that's going to have to come second. Right. We just can't you know, be this small committee. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can only do what we can do. Um, so we have to talk about how we want to come for that. I can first say that. I don't know my species, so <laughs> I'm not a good person. To, to, I'd have to go along with somebody <laughs> and record and take pictures. Yeah, with the house, the person, yeah, the, yeah, that's a good question. The, size, the number, you know, just the type of tree, age, I guess they have different yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. the probably. I think we could go in depth as we really want, you know, the health of the canopy or um, the health of the soil around, you know. And is it at our discretion to, you know, inventory the streets the way we see fit? It basically says create a tree on inventory. So I think that's in your discretion. Uh, I mean, certainly it's going to be the type of tree, how big it is, uh, and then you know whether or not you want to do a, a physical sketch or whatnot. I think it's up to you. You're right in terms of if you want to try to diagnose the condition, but that may be hard for everyone except for you, right? Uh, <laughs> Speaking and size, condition. Yeah. Uh, I think a good place to start would be uh, just the species and diameter. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I mean, you know, so we were talking about the $2 per capita. If we use that on tags, we could tag these trees with numbers and put that into a database and Check on them every once in a while. You know, tree number two 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 is at Champion Circle Park, mm -hmm. and uh, if anything was ever happened to it, we could go back and see what's happened to it. I mean, like I said, we could we could get really in depth with it, or 
just a base, basic inventory. I think I bought the tree. <laughs> a pen and computer. It, it seems like before we do that, we probably need to go over the map with somebody who knows it and figure out where the spaces are that we're talking about. I, I know where all spaces are. Okay, well then it would be very important to have it convenient. <laughs> and then we can um, um, break them down and create a list of who's going to go where when. Yep. And in terms of education, it'd be helpful maybe as long as Monica could tell us where to go, then maybe you could tell us what to look for and maybe have a small packet of information with what the species are, what they look like. I think I saw that somewhere. Okay. The problem is, unless we make it a public meeting, we can only go two at a time. Right. right. Unless we decide to have like a Saturday morning type of workshop that, and, and that we could do that on um, and tour and, and start working together as a group on that. We could have a work group meeting where we travel mm -hmm. with everybody in Colorado. Would you tell them to tell? Would you be able to tell if we had pictures? Yeah, like, like, yeah, you know, some, some photos of the beans and the bark, and then uh, that should be good enough as long as they're, you know, visible. Oh. <laughs> Not from far away, up close. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what I'm thinking. If I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> but we can certainly take pictures. Definitely, yeah. Pictures are great. I'm wondering if you know any other artists who might be willing to volunteer. Uh, I can probably think of a few. Do we want to contact the extension service? I have in the past in San Marcos, and they were very nice. Not that they're all at risk. are here now at all. Computer in Nicola now. I don't know if they, they were very willing to come out, um, but they aren't certified. I would have a pretty full schedule. <laughs> we have a new agent base and somebody. I wonder if tree folks. <laughs> it, it, no, it seems to me that, when, that we could make, make this kind of simple. If we chose a Saturday morning and we kind of had a little. Um, we toured all the properties, and maybe Jacob can help us get started, mm -hmm. and then maybe we can break into groups and then do it that way. So, and, you and, that map? I like that idea. Yeah. And, and just and just start yeah. that way. Um, and keep it simple to begin with. Just to start getting a grasp of what we have to do. I need to print that map out. Yeah, you guys. I think I sent you this map. Uh, yeah, you did. Okay. It's, it's, I, I think back, it was a Okay. Yeah, let's make some copies before we do that. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. uh, um, no, this one is a part. Yes, yeah, another one. I thought I, well, I think it's like YouTube, but it looks like there's a some sort of sort of butt in here, but it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, I don't know, like about twenty uh potential sites. Some of them are probably not very big. Um so between you know this number of people, you could divide it up. So anyway, that's a thought. It's not that overwhelming. It doesn't like there's a million pieces of property. So. Right. The entrance is really easy. It's all pretty standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the bigger ones too. Oh, <laughs> that's that's one of the bigger ones. Is it? I, I don't know. I, I think, think it is. Kind of that's the park, maybe. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. The triangle. Yeah, the triangle. But I think all I see is. And Parkview, Bur Oak, and One Oak. Mm -hmm. I drove it last week. So yeah, I guess kind of figure out what your process is. You know, let, let's identify the properties and let's figure out what we're going to look at, and then uh, you know, uh, then figure out who's going to look at what, and then set it up. And Jack gets to cover every single one of them. What is your timeline? Right. Do you want the inventory? For September, is that is that needed for the tree trees? I I, yeah. I would assume so, but I don't know. I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't know what how. 
if we're going to do the the application in September, I'd like to. I, yeah. Um, well, we need to get that done at least. I would have to say uh, the other in terms of the plan, uh, we could probably. I don't think we need a details for the, or a, a um, inventory for that. If we need to come up with an overall plan, you know, for that, the inventory will kind of help us. Okay. Right. I think we're going to need to do the deal we have before we can come up with a plan. Um, well, two of those real easy is the, in, the Veterans Memorial, the entrance, and Parview. They're super. I can yeah. put those out. Right. For that tree and that tree. So um, I think you have a list. Just verify that, that that's inclusive. I, I think it is. Deborah did it, and she's hardly ever wrong. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that's a way to start, but it's up to okay. you. It's your process. <clears throat> do we want to discuss the Saturday to do this? I mean, do you think that's the best approach, or should we just divide it and take pictures? Uh, uh, um, that was an idea I had. And, uh, um, United, we stand. Do you think we should we should all get together on Saturday morning, okay. or does somebody want to pick up a, a place and pick their own day to go do that? No. Is that quicker, easier for everybody to say, okay, I'll do this one, I'll do this one? I don't know what I'm looking for. Is my okay. problem. I, I know what the prices are because I was on the parks that <laughs> committee, but I do not, and I've lived in here a long time, but I do not know my species. I don't know what I'm really looking for. So I need some guidance. I need some education. Okay. So should we pick a Saturday morning? With that said, I don't have any open Saturdays until I'm checking my calendar today until in July. Um, well, you don't have to be there. I mean, you can do something you want, maybe. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's up to you guys, though. So. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I mean, heck, it's already, what is it, like the 13th? Right. Yeah. Coming up quick. Very. Hopefully, October gets here soon. We have our two weeks in July. Well, try to shape this into a, an action motion, how you want to do it. Okay. I just would like to emphasize that there's this other step that I, I don't know how to do it, spending at least $2 per capita on urban forestry. Yeah. I don't think we have to worry about that right now. I no, we you, don't, yeah, but I'm just suggesting it to the council right. so that they mm -hmm. know that it's part of our requirement. Right. I understand. I think Chris Robert uh, is on top of that. Uh, if, if you if you want to, you may email Chris. You just ask him. You know, are we aware of this? And I'll, I'll make a note to, to make sure we're aware of it as well. But Chris is kind of sort of the Tree City USA guy in a way, and he's as well as Deborah working on the ordinance. But uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll email him that for you, just to make sure. Or maybe Cindy would want to. Do, I'm sorry to <laughs> check out this. This requirement about the two dollars per capita. I, I think that's okay. I think council deals with the, the application process. You know, if you have sort of your plate set, which yeah. is the inventory, and looking at the ordinance and that sort of thing. So I'll I'll I'll, I'll team Chris on that and make sure that we're heading in the right direction on that. Yeah. Good point. Okay, are we going to discuss it at the next? Uh, well, our next meeting would be, uh, let's see, it's, it's the second Monday. Is that what we've just decided? This, this is the second Monday. The 11th. So our next meeting would be the 11th. Okay. And, um, of, of, Have you all you come know, up with a, with a plan on the uh, inventory? Or? No, I don't think we're 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 we pretty much have a plan. We just need a date and where to meet. Okay, and then you're going to need a motion in a second. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a Saturday morning, it could be an evening. That's another idea. We'll be another confirming that idea. Um, the next one, I think, okay. Just to provide guys, I think you ought to set some sort of not setting a date, set uh, a criteria what you're looking for. You're going to look for species. And size, right? If you buy, yes, and and um, health, what you see, 
general conditions. Yeah, general conditions. I mean, I, I don't know. I can see there's a lot of different. <laughs> Pretty soon, everything's going to tear. I know. No, we have to credit this. This is the first oh, time. Okay, so in putting this in an action motion, okay. uh, you know, someone needs to move to, uh, yes, um, you know, move, we're going to um, proceed with a tree inventory looking at species size, general condition, uh, and we're going to meet on this day to begin that process. Okay, okay. We have to figure out a date then. Um, does anybody want to come up with a, with a date, an idea? Um, I mean, I'll just say next week, I, I could do it almost any night. I don't have a lot of stuff going on with you next week. Me too. Mornings are busy for me. Too dark at three in the morning, but I'm not usually up. So, but so too dark. Saturday the 25th, maybe around five o'clock work. Oh, in the evening. Oh, I thought you said it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the 25th. Yeah, I think we should do it a little later, like seven or six. Who or not? I think. I think you're fine. Yeah, and you know, it, it stays light until almost nine o'clock. Right. We could get, so, get a lot done. Yeah. yeah. So this would be considered a workshop. Right. Yes. Yeah. More than two people. So one of us, so you need, to, we'll have to create an agenda, at least a list of where we're going. Okay. So if anybody else wanted to come, they can join right. us on the route. And one of us will have to be there. Okay. Well, come on, Brad. Oh, right. you don't want to, you might not want to give up a Saturday night. Okay. Thanks, Maureen. Yeah. I'll take the day on the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> we also need, we need, are we talking about this meeting and having a little guidance session first? Right. And then we'll decide then how we're going to split up the location. Right. Well, and I think if, if someone wants to go do a location on the 25th, you know, leave yourself some room for that. Um, but we don't know if, if Maureen said she can't do the 25th, didn't you? Um, or no, I didn't say that. Oh, uh, I just said one of us would need to be there. Uh, what do you we would to... call it a workshop. Okay. And and write the agenda out. You know, where where we're going and what order we're going. Mm -hmm. But if just two of us wanted to, two of us started, we're okay. Right. Two people is okay. Why not? It's three. three that maybe is. start with two people. Uh, I mean, you, you, and so you, you would like to sign a committee. These two are going to go here. Or you could just do two people go get the lay of the land and then come up with an action plan for the next meeting and turn that to a motion. I guess that that could be a good idea. I mean, we could we could just. Yeah, I think it would be easier for everybody who has such different schedules. I like that. And and so um if we did if we just split into two and we decide who's gonna take. Um so um make some suggestions. <laughs> I didn't even split it up. Um, like the motion would be something like we have a subcommittee of oh, mm -hmm. oh. Cindy and Dorothy going here. Okay. And so the one of the issues though is that Jake is our expert. I know, but what I think that what we're going to do now is just start to uh, first. I'll go out to the go to these places. We can we can take pictures. We can count how many trees, and then when we get together again with uh, on our regular meeting, we Jacob can help us. You know, we can figure out what kind of trees and how to work on the inventory that way. That way, we don't have to come up with a trying to get us all together and and doing it that way. Next year, pretty next week. Okay. Okay. Um, but and, and I, uh, yeah, Jeff's gonna be out of town, so I'm, I'm good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go party. <laughs> sure, that's that's great. Let's do that. I mean, sit down the calendar. Okay. Are you thinking about an action? Motion or motion? Um, I have, yeah, okay. Well, don't we all have, we, do we all have to decide? Okay, we, we can just put a motion together. We can just say, um, I make a motion that, um, that our, our way that 
committee's way to move forward on, on the tree inventory request would will be to um will to break into subcommittees and and um up to up to and to inventory the city and um then when we reconvene at our we can be at our next meeting. Um, we will we will try to assimilate the data. I second. So breaking down into twos. Well, I mean, I can be the liaison i can give with somebody right mm -hmm. okay so i'll pair up with someone yeah we're going to do the city parks like there's only um yeah there's we have to do the parks we have to do the traffic and we can break it up into um yeah well, i was kind of looking here to look at um try to yeah but yeah there's four parks and then we have to split that up too which, if you so, want to say the chair and the vice chair will sign the areas for the pairs. You can set the pairs will be Monica and Cindy, or how do you want to do it? If you want to set the pairs now, or... um, we can just go ahead and set it now. We can decide that you want to set it now in case somebody wants to get like go and looking at them. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because we're here, we can just get it done. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going uh, to have a. Um, you know, I don't know how to put this in a motion. Well, no, we, well, we, we have the motion. Okay. Well, yeah, well, well, should we, can we go ahead and, and vote on the motion now, and then we can do the business? Of yeah, the yeah. Thing that's, that's the motion, yeah. and then we can say and the, uh, the process will be well, determined by the chair and vice chair or something, or? Man. I can add it to the motion. What is the motion right now? Motion is all right. Uh, well, I started with some way back on. Uh, wait for the committee to move forward uh, on agenda item number four to discuss to, for the C oh city council tree inventory request is for the tree board to break into subcommittees of two people and inventory the city and reconvene at the next meeting to assimilate the debt. Okay. I think that's fine. And then I think based on that, you, you can decide what pairs and where. Right. Okay, so should we then vote on mm -hmm. vote? Mm -hmm. And that was firsted by you? No, you made the motion by you, but then you seconded it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Okay. So, doing the quote, board member Jordy Tation. Yes. Board member Cindy Jones. Yes. Board member Jacob McElroy. Yes. Board member Iris Ross. Yes. Board member Monica Roske. Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Now, we, now we have to decide how to divide it up. I think you guys can do that on your. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys have authority to do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'll be if you just want to call me tomorrow afternoon. I'll be in the library in the morning, but I'll be coming in the afternoon. Just call me, and then we'll just because there's a you know we just have to get that. But I'm not going to snap out. I have. Oh, we can get a copy. Sure. Yeah, if they just make a hard copy for everybody else, it would be easier. I think so too. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. We can just leave with it. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 everybody yeah. would have it. We need to get July 11th. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it's more um, so excited. I, I can feel, I can feel the passion and the love for trees. I'm so excited. Sit in the next meeting.